real estate with a twist. We're gonna twist again. This is part two of our whiskey series. I should have made it about four parts. Uh, this is just actually touching the surface. So I'd recommend if you're in whis into whiskeys or you wanna get into whiskeys, uh, look up just the history of whiskey and the different types. We're gonna to touch briefly on it. Uh, last week we talked briefly of the actual history of whiskey. Uh, whiskey with an E, whiskey not with an E. Scotland spells it without an E. I think Japan without an E. There are a few countries that do without an E, mostly Scottish and the rest of us, America, uh, add the E. It doesn't really mean anything other than it sort of tells you where it's derived from. Uh, we talked about whiskey being made from different grains. Corn, which, well, let's start with barley or malted things. When you see a single malt scotch, single malt, uh, malt means that it's entirely malted barley. Uh, so this is obviously all malted barley. And you're gonna have things like rye. Rye means it's at least, depending on where you are, normally at least 51% rye is the grain in that. And then you have things like the bourbon. Bourbon is a corn-based American drink, and that it's actually almost entirely American. It's just starting to spread to other places in the world, and that's corn. And then you can mix up any of that stuff to include wheat. And so there are some wheat liquors out there, but normally you'll have a mash bill, which is what the guys decide their ingredients are if it's gonna be a mix of stuff. Uh, so in this case, you may have 55% rye, and then it, the rest may be made up of barley or wheat or corn or some other things. The other thing I'm not gonna really touch on is sour mash. Sour mash was the guy who discovered that he could take mash that was from one batch or a little bit older and mix it in partially with the next batch. Obviously Jack Daniels and many other Americans are sour mash whiskey, but all that is is through temperature and all that controlling and using older mash to continue to make the next batch of drinks. So kind of using a double mash and hence the sour mash. Uh, that's pretty much your basic liquors. So, single malt, let's go ahead uh, and talk about the world single malt. Single just means that it came from one distillery. Uh, malt is obviously the ingredient, 100% malt. So, if you see things like uh, blended, I think it is, uh, blended, it may come from stuff from more than one distillery, or here, I better look at my notes here because what ends up happening is I mess this up. So if you see blended malt, that may mean that it comes from two distilleries, still 100% malt. And the other scotch that you'll see is normally a grain, uh, it'll just say single grain scotch. Uh, that means it's not 100% barley and it's whatever mixture. So those are sort of the two things you have, single malt, single grain. Uh, from there, it goes into blended malt, blended grain. And then if you wanna go to the really redheaded stepchild of the uh, whiskey or scotch world, you get down to a blended scotch. Blended scotch means that it can come from as many places in the world, as many different distilleries, thrown into a big pot. It's normally the cheapest stuff available. If you find one you like, scotch and whiskeys are all about taste. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so those are sort of the different uh, flavors or varieties of whiskey you can get. Like I said, we are just touching the surface here, so don't think that uh, there's not a lot more to read if you want to study on this stuff. Because of the time we used up doing that, we're going to get into our drink of the week. This week we're going to make an Irish mule which is just a take off of the, uh, obviously the vodka based mule. The thunder's going outside, it's about to get exciting in here. So our ingredients, we're just gonna use Jameson, a traditional Irish whiskey since it's an Irish mule. It'll be two ounces of that, one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. You can use a little bit more uh, depending on how you like it, but one ounce is pretty good. And then we're gonna garnish it with a lime and we're gonna top off with ginger beer. That's a pretty simple cocktail. So in this case, you don't put it in your shaker, you just add it right to the cup your one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice or lime juice, two ounces of an Irish whiskey, and then top it off with ginger beer. That's a pretty big cup, so I'm not gonna fill it to the rim because that would just get way too thin for me to enjoy. And in this case, we have an Irish mule. And remember, if you need anything in the real estate world, even if you don't, just like my page so you can follow my recipes from week to week. I enjoy that as much as selling real estate or buying for you. Cheers.